What's going on guys, Casual Savage here, and in this video I'm going to be showing you how to use Audacity. Now for those that don't know, Audacity in brief is a free software which allows you to record your voice. It's available on Windows, Mac and Linux. Now currently I am on their website, and I will put a link to it in the description. All you need to do is select download Audacity, and of course it will begin to install. Now this is what Audacity looks like. There has been a few changes since the last time I made a tutorial on this, and I will be going over them in the video. Now the first thing I'm going to be covering is the user interface, so you know what you're actually looking at on the screen. So we're going to start over on the top right here, and first thing we've got is the playback level, and also the microphone levels. Now the microphone levels, if you haven't already changed them in the sound settings, then I do recommend adjusting them through here. And the playback levels, if you're not going to adjust the volume from the speaker settings at the bottom, then by all means you can change it from here. Now on the side of them is the microphone level, and of course the playback level as well. Now we'll be showing you them later on in the video how they work and what they will look like. Now moving on down here we've got the playback speed so you can choose if you want it to be playing quicker or of course if you want it to be playing slower. Now just above here is where we've got some tools which of course we're going to get onto later on in the video however just to go over it very quickly we've got a selection tool, we've got the envelope tool which will help you adjust the volume throughout uh, your recordings. We've got a draw tool, again this will make more sense later on. We've got the magnifying tool so you can zoom in. Then we've got the time shift tool. And the final thing we've got here is the multi tool. Now moving over again to the side, which are going to be one of your best friends in this program. You've got the record button, you've got the skip to the end, skip to the start buttons, stop, play and of course pause. Now just a quick tip for you, if you are going to be recording, let's say you've pressed record, and then you need to pause it for whatever reason, let's say Amazon Prime is at your door, you need to pause the recording, simply press the pause button, then the recording won't actually stop, it will literally pause dead on, then when you come back, press the record button again, and it will take off right where you were from. And again, that will make more sense later on in the video, but that's just a tip to remember. Now underneath, this is more of the editing side here, so we've got like the cut, copy and paste, then we've got the trim and the silent selection tools, and the undo, redo tools, and of course magnifying glasses again. Now just underneath that, this is where we will be setting up your microphone and of course the playback settings. So you can pick which one is going to be for your microphone, the way you find out. If your microphone doesn't appear, well then it won't work for it. So just take a look through and see where you see your microphone. Now I'm currently editing the video and I was recording a voiceover for this actual video and I also ran into another issue where my microphone didn't get picked up. Now the reason this happened is because I already had Audacity opened and then I plugged in my microphone and my microphone didn't show up. So I closed Audacity, reopened it and then my microphone appeared. So you can also try that as well. As simple as it may sound, it works for me. So my microphone is under Windows WSAPI, then of course from here you select your microphone, so my microphone is here. Mine is only a one mono, and that will make more sense later on in the video. Um, most of yours may possibly be two, I think because mine is an XLR microphone, it is a one. Um, I'm not going to be held accountable for that, but you'll make more sense and you'll realise what microphone you actually have when I show you the recording in a bit. The next icon is the speaker icon, so this is going to be the playback device, and this is currently set to my microphone, which I don't want, of course, I want it to be set to the speakers, and that is the LG screen. Now, final few things on the screen, so heading over to the bottom, we've got the project rate settings. To be honest, 44,100 has always worked for me, you can go up to 48. Uh, to be honest, that is the max I would go to. Unless you're going to be doing a podcast, then you can go a bit higher if necessary. However, to be honest, I've used this same settings for at least six years, never had any issues. You can also add a snap to if you want to, that is completely optional. To be honest, I've never used it. And then you've got the audio position, start and end selections. So this will help later on in the video once you've actually recorded something. So right now I'm going to record something. And I'll also show you the feature I mentioned earlier where you can pause in case Amazon Prime come. So... Let's start recording. So we're going to be recording and as you can see it's very quiet. Now I'm quite glad these errors are popping up within the video because I've actually experienced these errors in the past whilst using Audacity. Now what's happened here if we X out of that my microphone levels has dropped at the top right. So if you remember that just be aware of that. 
Now, to be honest, I keep mine probably just at 0.86. Now, this is where you need to play around with your own microphone settings because, of course, you can use it here. So, I'm now monitoring my audio. 0.86 is perfect because the way I'm talking isn't going into the reds. So now I can press record in 3, 2, 1. So we're now recording using Audacity. And this is just a test. Oh, Amazon's at the door. So there you go. You can see I've pressed pause. When I come back, I've now picked up my parcel. I'm going to press unpause again. And now we are back. Amazon has gone. And then, of course, once you're happy with everything, just press stop. Simple as that, you've now recorded something, and of course you got the audio waves going up and down throughout the entire track. Now, if you notice when I was talking here, the uh, monitoring levels here, this was going up and down, so again, make sure you pick the right levels. It's very, very important. If you don't, your audio will be either distort or it'll be very quiet. Playback audio, you don't need to worry about how loud that is because of course you can always adjust that later on in the edits. Now, one thing you'll notice here, I actually left a gap at the beginning and I do this with all of my videos and the reason for that is because I want the background noise to be removed. Now personally for me, I've been editing my voice for all my tutorials for the past 5 years in Audacity. So what I'll do, of course leave a gap in the middle, or at the beginning sorry, then I'll export my audio to Audacity, left click, drag out this centerpiece here, which is just of course the background noise because I was sitting in silence. From here, head over to Effect, then select Noise Reduction, select Get Noise Profile, then press Ctrl A on your keyboard, head back over to Effect, Noise Reduction, and select OK. And then you can come back to Effect and select Normalize and OK. Now what I've just done and what I've just shown you is how to remove the background noise from your recordings. Now me personally, I get a lot of background noise from my laptop fan. So, hence why I always sit in quiet at the beginning so my microphone can pick up the laptop fan noise, then we can get rid of it just like that. So, heading back up to the top where of course we've got the tools. So the zoom in tool, we can just left click and it zooms in as you can see. If you want to zoom out, you just right click. Pretty simple. You've then got the time shift tool. This is just if you have more than one recording on the same track. You can see you can move it about so you can choose where you want it to start. And of course, if you want to cut it out like that. Back up to the selection tool, you saw me use it earlier, just left click and drag. You can see you can highlight specific parts. Let's say now we remove the audio from the beginning where it's just picking up the fan. We don't really need that. So we can left click, highlight it and press delete on your keyboard. And that removes that section of the video or the audio. Now we've got the envelope tool. Now this is what it looks like. And like I said, it helps you control the volumes. So you can left click as you can see it will lay out a dot and I can bring this in and you can see it will help us control how loud this volume will be. We can left click again, say it's gone quiet here, we can bring it back up and it's just an easier way of helping us control the levels of our audio. So there you go for example, this is one thing you can do and this is also why it is vital at the beginning like I showed you is to work out your microphone levels because otherwise if your audio is all over the place coming loud then quiet, it's not going to be very professional and secondly you're going to have to go through your audio doing all of this which will take a very long time. But you've got that option and of course that will also save you. Now the next tool is the drawing tool, however we can't use it just yet because you need to be zoomed in. If I left click you can see it will tell you zoom in further so you can see it. So get the magnifying tool, we'll zoom in. So you need to zoom all the way in literally until you see these dots and then you can head over to the draw tool and now this is what you're going to be editing. You can see it's just these little, little things here. So this, to be honest, wouldn't be for people that are doing podcasts, wouldn't be for people that are just recording their voice in general. It's going to be mainly for people that are doing vocals such as singing or something. And as you can see, it's just going to be very, very accurate way to control the audio wave patterns. So if say something is all the way down here, then of course you can always use this draw tool to bring that back up to the right level. And it's just an extreme way of editing. And of course, like I said, mainly just for people that are going to be recording with vocals. Now the final tool is called the multi tool. So this is basically all the tools I've just shown you built into one. So you can see we can zoom out like that. 
we can use the move tool if we hold shift or uh, hold control on our keyboard if we hold shift we can do the selection tool and of course to zoom back in you can just use this one over here now you've recorded your audio you've done a bit of editing to it now over to the side here you can see you can adjust the gain so this is how loud or of course how quiet you want it again so this is after you've done the recording so you can no longer change the microphone levels you can change it from here now if there's an issue with your microphone for whatever reason or you just want for the audio to be heard in the left ear then you can pan it to the left or you can pan it to the right or you can just put a bit more to the right instead of the middle so that's how that works and then of course getting on to some of the things you can add to make your voice a bit better so again highlight it all come over to effect and go head over to the filter curve now this is a new thing they've added well it's not specifically new however they've now called it filter curve it used to be something else I think it was equalizer but now it's called filter curve you can head over to manage factory preset you can select a bass boost so you can base uh, boost your voice a bit you can select OK you can see that's what you've done now personally for me after adding any effect to my voice I always go back to effect and select normalize and OK another one I'd recommend heading back over to effect heading back over to filter curve I would then go to manage factory presets and I would select treble boost and I'll turn this down a bit again select OK once again I'm going to head over to effect normalize and OK and then the final thing I'd add is compression so compressor usually I leave this at default by all means if you want to change it you can select OK again and then finally effect normalize and OK and that's pretty much how I edit all of my audio recordings now I will be making a separate tutorial on that just because I didn't do it in the same steps I usually do now earlier in the video I mentioned how would you know if yours is a one mono or a two stereo now it's really simple now when I first got this microphone I've got now I was a bit confused because I'm used to two stereo as the setting here so I set it up as default however when I recorded it was only going waveforms at the above nothing below so it should look like this make sure yours looks like this there's waveforms going up and down if yours is just on one level then I suggest try changing the stereo to one mono and that's what seemed to work for me and since then I've used one mono now another thing I recommend you do is of course saving your project as you're recording or whilst you're editing just in case the program crashes now in my experience I've never actually had audacity crash so it's been a very good program for me over at least five years so it's got some trustworthiness there however just in case press ctrl s on your keyboard of course save it wherever you want to and I'm just going to call this example select save now once you've obviously finished editing you need to export it into an mp3 or a wav or whatever format you want so press ctrl a on your keyboard just so it highlights everything press file export and then of course you've got these different options here how you would like it done me personally I always do mp3 so I'm going to select that I'm going to leave it saved as file name which is example and I'm going to select save after that you're going to get this coming up so of course if you have recorded vocals you can fill this in to be honest I never put anything in and I'm going to select OK now just like that it's already exported now depending on the length of the track it may vary how long it actually takes so here we go you can see it's saved here it's 139 kilobytes and straight away it is saved right here as an mp3 format as well like we wanted now that is everything within Audacity, that is how you use it, like I said I will be making another video very soon how to actually make your voice sound better in Audacity, I've been showing this for many years however I always change it every now and then just because I tweak a little feature and I find it works better, so that video will be coming soon so keep an eye out for that. Now if there is anything you need help on be sure to leave it in the comments or of course just ask me on my social media and I'll try my best to assist you. As always, if you're looking for a specific tutorial on this program or any other software, let me know in the comments, again, or social media, and I'll try and get that video done for you as soon as I can.